Good afternoon, everybody, or good morning, depending where you are in the world, and welcome to this Stalls TV session called Get It Straight, Loading and Placement Advice for Heat Printing. We have an hour class today, and it's going to be open for Q&A throughout. So as usual, if you've attended a Stalls TV live classroom before, you know that you can chat questions in on the right-hand navigation in the GoToWebinar screen. There is a questions box. You can chat those in. Uh, we have Jody that will be helping with questions today. So hi, Jody. And then we also have some up-close views that you'll get today as uh, Joe Kaczynski, our video production manager from Stalls TV, will helping you help us get those shots so you can see exactly how to line stuff up. Um, ultimately, I'd like to understand a little bit more about the audience before we get started. Um, and so we're going to launch a poll that just asks some simple questions like, do you own a heat press? And as you're answering that question, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Josh Ellsworth. I'm a Stalls TV educator and have given a lot of different live classrooms and a lot of tutorial videos that are available on stallstv.com. Myself, as well as 19 other educators, uh, are committed to bring you uh, new education tips, tricks to grow your business, ultimately to become successful in heat printing or any other decorating technology. So we'll close that poll. And okay, so 83% own a heat press, 17% uh, do not. And then do we have an additional poll there, Jody? Okay, if we can launch that. Sure. Yeah, so for those 83% that do own a heat press, we're interested to see what types of heat applied graphics you're applying with your heat press. Um, because there's actually different tips and tricks for different uh, transfer technologies. So I want to make sure we cover uh, the majority of the ones that you know. And you can select more than one answer here. So we'll give you a couple uh, moments to read down through those. We have the majority of the folks that voted, hopefully. All right, and then uh, Jody's going to read me the results and share them with you. Okay. Okay. Great. So we'll close that sharing. Um, a lot of different transfer types. So the majority of you have applied CAD cut or digital transfers or regularly do that in your business. So we'll certainly work with those a lot today, uh, which are one of the easiest, easiest for lining up with the tool I'll show you today. And then also uh, screen printed transfers. And that's kind of where we'll start. So um, there's a couple tips that happen first before you can actually make sure that a graphic is placed straight. And that has to do with loading your garment onto the heat press straight and properly. And uh, unfortunately, there's no magic solution for this, but I'm going to give you tips and tricks on how I do it. Um, and then we'd welcome your feedback. If you have a better way, please chat it in, and we'll know for next time. But let me show you how I get garments straight, and we'll start over on the Fusion Heat Press. So I'm just going to start with the basic T-shirt. For those of you that own a Hotronics Fusion or any threadable style of heat press, you probably load your garments screen printing style, which means you split them and thread them on. We call that threading the garment onto the heat press. So we'll start there just by opening up the garment, sliding it onto the press. And then usually one of the first things I like to do is generally straighten it out to get the tag in the center. I'm not really too concerned with how it's loaded at this point. I just throw the shirt on. Make sure the, the collar, the opening in the collar and the tag are relatively to the center. And then I'm really going to pull the shirt down as if, as if the heat press was the person wearing the shirt. Um, ultimately, there's no um, magic sometimes with the tag being centered or with the, the way the sleeves are cut because it can be sewn off. But I know ultimately this go garment is going to hang on a person if I pull it all the way down. That's how the shoulder seams are going to hit a person. So that's how it's going to fit somebody that's wearing it, just like it fits the lower plat on my heat press, and that's the real advantage of threading the garment. Once I do that, for those of you familiar with heat printing, you know that we want to get rid of any collars, any seams off of the pressing surface when possible, um, because uh, sometimes it can leave a little bit of a mark on this collar if I just lock the press down in this position. So often, I'll um, draw the shirt back evenly, grabbing both corners until the collar of the shirt drops off the edge. And now I know I have a relatively straight garment that's been loaded. One other key thing, just to make sure that the garment's not completely off kilter, especially when you deal with different size of garments, is just simply measuring the distance 
of how far these seams are following down, just with a quick hand test where you drop your fingers in there, um, feel where it's touching on both sides of the press at the same time to make sure that that seam structure is generally in the same spot across the garment, just to make sure it's not completely off. Of course, you can hold this up, try to line the tag to the backbone of the press to make sure things are trending straight there. Um, I've heard tips from other folks where the garments will come with a basic crease in them for where they've been folded and making sure that's centered. Um, all of that's up to you. I also have some customers that will fold the garment sleeve to sleeve and actually press a center crease for loading. I personally don't find clients are that particular um, about the, the placement of their graphic where I need to have a definitive center line. As long as I'm comfortable that it's straight within maybe 1-2% error, I'm totally comfortable with that. So we'll load that garment back on in a second. For now, I'm going to remove it from the press. For those of you that are loading it on a traditional press and just laying the garment out, um, usually you're laying it with the collar up towards the top side of the press, depending on if you're using a, a clamshell style. And then often you just kind of hold the shirt out, once again, to make sure the overlap distance is similar on all sides. This becomes increasingly difficult with larger shirts. With smaller shirts, it's very easy. But ultimately, I just want to make sure it's relatively straight. And then the same thing, I'll slide the collar evenly off of the back edge of the press, knowing that I have a center area and my garment is centered and placed properly on the press. Now, having your garment straight is one thing, but then placing your graphic straight is where we're going to spend the majority of your time today. Um, and for this, we have a tool um, called the Stahl's Laser Alignment System that I'm going to demonstrate for you. I'm going to start by loading a component that comes with the tool. So I guess let's just reference the tool first, Joe. This is the standalone laser alignment system. Basically, you get four independently adjustable line lasers, and you get four switches for turning on each particular laser, depending on how many you want to use. You can turn them on, and they'll shoot down onto the heat press as you're adjusting it. It's a standalone single piece. Um, I recommend that um, you mount it. If your heat press is on a stand, you put it on a table separate from the heat press or the shelves. That way it's not moving when the press moves. Um, ultimately, you want to have it sitting uh, next to your heat press, usually within a couple feet, so the line lasers can shoot onto the pressing surface, as we see here when I click those on. Okay, In the box with this tool comes something called the Hotronics Laser Alignment Wizard. Um, so when you're placing stuff and heat printing garments in your business, typically you're either setting up to run a job. For those of you that order screen printed transfers, you know your jobs are usually 12 plus pieces with that style. Um, so you're setting up job specific, or in some cases you're setting up general. Um, and general means basically I want to set the laser up, I want to leave it alone, and I may bring a single CAD cut transfer, two digital transfers, three screen printed transfers, a lot of unique garments and placements over to the press. So I'm going to show you how to set it up first for general placement using this laser alignment wi wizard. And so you just load this onto the press. It fits perfectly on the 16 by 20 attachment, just making sure it's straight. And then you'll see it says your tag here, similar to how I loaded that press or threaded it on and let the collar hang over the edge. It's built so it can flap and hang over the edge. And you just want to butt it up and make sure everything's straight here. And then basically you get a template or a wizard that you can shoot your laser on to get some perfect placements. So for general alignment, meaning set it and forget it, don't set it up per job because you're doing a lot of low quantities and runoffs, one-offs, we have a couple key points. Number one is a center line. So the laser alignment wizard allows you to dial the laser line into a center line on the template. That is very beneficial when you need to line something, uh, center it up, and we'll show you that. Uh, placement number two is three inches down from the collar. This is a typical placement on a uh, for the top of the graphic of a front of a t-shirt. So you may have heard this reference before as three or four fingers down depending on the thickness of your finger. A lot of people use that methodology three or four fingers down for the placement of the graphic. This gives you a definitive line from where the edge of the collar is for standard cut t-shirts of course. The next placement is four inches down from the collar. That's placement number three. We reference on our key up in the top here that that line is our top back placement. So three inches is pretty typical for if you're putting something across the center of the back, um, especially for a lady's garment where there may be um, long hair, a ponytail, whatever it might be that would cover up the graphic. So that's a typical center back design. 
Um, number four is the center of the left chest, which is measured as four inches off of the center of the garment. So you see that? We have the zero mark, which you have a ruler here that goes from zero out to um, eight inches one way and zero out to eight inches the other way for a 16 inch wide platen. So four inches off of the zero mark to the left, assuming you've loaded your shirt upside down, is a good um, gauge for left chest center. Um, and so you start to intersect that left chest center with wherever you want to shoot your other line, whether that's four inches down, seven inches down, whatever it may be for your garment. And we'll go through some placement specs momentarily. Number five is a 15 degree angle print. So for those of you doing a lot of athletics, names and numbers, undoubtedly, you do some athletic tails or script with tail. This puts you at a perfect 15 degree angle for script with tail uh, placement, which is one of the most challenging to make sure it's the same exact placement every time. So with that in, line, in mind, let's flip on our lasers here. And let's try to get them uh, placed. Um, they're pretty close, but generally, um, I'm going to put this one on a script with tail placement. So I'm moving the laser up at the machine and basically tightening, tightening it once I hit it on the specific placement across there. And then I'll move to the next laser. Let's line this one up for the left chest. So I'm just positioning it into place, tightening it. Of course, these lasers are fully ro uh, can be fully rotated as well. And then for my, last, oh, my, my next to the last placement, I'm going to try to dial this in on the center line. Tighten it. And then for my last one, of course, being careful not to move the standalone system. I'm actually going to have to loosen it a little further because I need a little rotation. So I can rotate it. I'll just show you how so I can rotate it completely here. put that into place, make my fine adjustments. That's always better. I can't, for our particular setup here, if you can get to the back side of the laser as well, that way you don't have to reach across the three lasers to get to the uh, fourth placement. Once you have it set up on your laser alignment wizard, of course you want to get rid of this. Um, we have a little warning here that says don't heat press this, it'll melt, so uh, we don't want you heat pressing that. And then the laser lines will shoot down onto the attachment. And as I mentioned before, this is great for general placement. So what I'm going to do is we'll load a basic garment. Let me find one here. I have a whole selection here to choose from. I believe I'm set up for a screen printed transfer. So we'll start with a basic screen printed transfer. Um, for those of you that order screen printed transfers from Transfer Express, you know that they come in a gang sheet, so you can fit as many transfers as possible onto one sheet for the same price. So in this case, I'm going to trim this apart. And then I also want to keep in mind that my design is actually a little further down from where the actual transfer is. So I want to look for a line that sits where the transfer is. And the Transfer Express Goof Proof have the grid line here. So I'm looking for the second line down for lining up my transfers. And that will remain consistent on every subsequent print um, that I have. So lay that to the side. Let's load that same basic t-shirt. Remember pulling it down all the way. Making sure that things are relatively centered and even on the sides. And then retracting it back. So it hangs down over. I'll get rid of the lines I'm not going to use. I'll keep the center line. That's my placement. Get rid of the other stuff so I can save the laser power. Position it down onto the second line. Also find the center mark of my transfer. So I didn't uh, figure out a particular center line prior to this. So what I'll do is I'll just fold this back to back and give myself a little crease on one side so I can find what line is center. That's another quick tip. Position it into place. Shooting down the center line right where that crease fell and across that placement and ultimately I'm ready to heat print my graphic. Now of course you can dial in those lasers wherever you want. We'll go ahead and heat print this one down first. It goes down 
Um, usually at 365, I have the unit set at 340, um, and I'm going to press it for nine seconds uh, since it's at a lower temp. I'm, I'm at 340 because we're going to press a variety of transfers today, and I don't want to have to keep adjusting my uh, heat press and making you wait. Open it, the goof proof transfer is a hot peel. And then we have a completed result that's placed perfectly and will be placed perfectly every time. So now, on subsequent shirts, I'll continue to hit the same placement. Everyone will fall the same distance down from the collar. And it's really easy um, to set that up to run it for a repetitive job. Let me bring my next sample in. But before I go too far, I just want to make sure there's no questions coming in. OK, so we're good so far. I'm going to stick with um, screen printed transfers and show you another technique. So that was general uh, placement. I want to show you job specific placement as well. So some, some other, one other key to printing uh, screen print transfers that's really unique. If you only have one design on the sheet, you can do something I like to call a right corner register. So this is the same print, single color print that's been printed on all these sheets. And what I can do for those of you that are using a ruler um, to line stuff up typically, you don't have to throw away your ruler. You can measure your first print and then set the lasers up for the job. I'll show you what I mean. So once again, I'm pulling the shirt down, draping the edge. I will take the time to line up my transfer, being cognizant of where the transfer is on the garment, um, on the actual transfer sheet, rather. So I know I have approximately two and a half inches down on the sheet for this 24-piece job. So if it's two and a half inches down and I want to place this three inches down, I know I want to drop it another half inch. I can take my ruler and make sure each side of the sheet is dropped by a half inch from the top edge of the press. Let's bring it up slightly. Okay, half inch on all placements, on all measurements. And then also from left to right, I want to make sure it's centered. And this one's pretty easy to see, but you could take your ruler if you're that particular about it and make sure there's equal distances on both sides. But then once I have one sheet completely loaded, what I can do is I can dial in the lasers to the sheet. Um, so I'm going to load the garment the same way every time, but let me just take my laser here. Let me find which one's in the general position here. I'll take my script with tail laser, which is in my first location. Now I'm going to line it up to the bottom of the sheet. So quick adjustment, bottom of the sheet. Let me find my center laser here. Take my center laser and bring it down to the right corner, left corner, whatever you want to do. being so far away. Am I uh, down on the right corner there, Joe? Pretty close. Okay. And so now I can disable my top one every time I bring a new sheet to the press. Basically, take it off the press. I've loaded my next shirt. Now I'm grabbing my next sheet and I'm just going to bring it down to a right corner register, making sure it's going straight across the bottom line and I'm ready to heat print. So it's very simple if you line it up job specific. So hopefully you get the point there. Now I just roll through my 24 shirts. I'm guaranteed to have all of the, the same placements. Sure, go ahead with the question. Okay, so the question was, can you rotate your laser alignment wizard um, the other way so your tag would be at the top end? Yeah, so if you're not like me who's threading the press or you prefer just to lay your um, shirt out, you can absolutely do that. So 
We're, off, we're running it here on a swing away press. All you have to do is make sure it drapes down over the edge, um, especially if you're pulling your collar down over the edge, and then you are good to go. Now the other option that you can do if you don't have the room to drape your collar over the edge, you can leave the collar on the press, if you're used to doing that, and just shoot a line across where the collar is going to lay every time. Or you can even shoot a crosshair on where the tag's going to be, but tags kind of vary. So I would recommend shooting a line across the collar, and then you'll be able to move the shirt to that placement every time, and then measure down from there accordingly. So the Laser Alignment Wizard is simply just a guide uh, designed to help you with placement. Now another um, thing that I want to mention before I get too far into the presentation, I'm already uh, making quite a mess here, is that the laser alignment wizard isn't just for swing away style presses. So we have one that's been set up over at our clamshell style. Um, this is just a Stalls Max press. It can be an auto open press. Um, you'll notice we have this press up on a counter caddy to make it threadable so we can split our garment still and load it. Not a requirement, but even if the press is flat on the table, we just have the laser off to the side here uh, on the table and we can flip on the switches and you can dial in those lines from a distance to wherever you want. So the point is that you can get full alignment on any style of press. The only thing that I would recommend not doing is doing it on the draw functionality of the Fusion because I don't like to pull the move the pressing area once I have the laser grid set up. I want to keep that stationary and do all my loading and my placement from there. So we'll press, um, check my temperature, we'll press a style of transfer on this here in a moment and I'm going to work this other press down in temperature for my next application. Is there any other questions while we're doing that? Okay, so I'm just going to bring this down to roughly around 300 degrees for my next application. It's up at 340. Okay, so I show this in a lot of my different classes. One of the most popular styles of shirts out there is this pom-pom jersey, billboard crew, whatever you want to call it. There's a lot of different names for it. And the idea is, and I may have to use the floor here because we don't have much layout room, is that this is an oversized shirt with an oversized panel in the back. So it's large. Once you get it to the heat press, it's tough to find your placement. And also, we are doing large graphics across the back here that are often tough to place. So one of the things that you can do is if you want to, you can do two things here. You can set up your placement off of the press, meaning I can set up a workstation or a table, lay these garments out, make sure they hit the, the, my marks. I can even tape some marks here for my garments, make sure it hits the marks. And then basically I can shoot the laser off of it off of the press. So I have some people that will do that. They'll use the laser alignment just on a table They'll shoot their placement, and then they'll place their transfer based on where the laser's shooting. Tape their transfer in place, they'll stack them, and then they basically have them ready to go once they get over to the heat press. So that's one option. You can always use the laser independent from the press, do your placements so you can see the whole shirt, and then take it over to the press for application. One thing I'll tell you is it stalls we recommend to preheat before applying your transfer. So you would probably want to preheat that before you did your layout, or... Um, you would assume the risk. And preheat just helps you with better durability. So I'm going to load this onto the clamshell just to show you another style of press. You want to make sure your shirt's relatively flat. If you have some wrinkles and creases because of the packing, you see how it's throwing my laser off. Um, you just want to preheat first to remove those wrinkles so you can get a flatter placement. Anytime it's traveling over a seam or a, a, an unflat area, it's going to just throw the laser a little bit. So you want to be careful. It's not, a, it's not as useful for going over seams. So once again, we can do job specific. These oversized prints at the press, great to fold them back to back. This is a CAD cut transfer. For those of you who don't know, it's CAD cut glitter flake. Cut these on a vinyl cutter, order them pre-done not very sensitive. You can just crease right through the material. I'm going to line it up on my center line. 
I'm looking to place the California right down on the line I've set up underneath. And I'll flatten it out to make sure everything's straight. The C and the A are both falling there. If I'm really particular, I can hold the shirt out and make sure the edges um, of the design are in the equal spot, which is a little higher than a California placement. And then basically I'm ready to rock and roll. Once you get the placement, you can slide it. It's all lined up already. I'm going to press half. For those of you that don't own a heat press, while I recommend the Hotronics Fusion, I know sometimes there's a budget and a price point, this Stahl's Max Press is a great model uh, for somebody that's just starting. It's a little less expensive and you still get the stalls manufacturing quality, uh, good warranty and durability, you get the accuracy that you need. And then press the other half. And stalls max is M-A-X-X. -X. Once it's been applied, I'm going to peel the backing. And I have a perfectly placed transfer. It's tough to see until I pull it off the press. Um, but you can see it's straight, it's in the right location, you just dial in the lasers wherever you want. Um, if you want that placement to be higher, closer to the collar, that's up to you. You dial in one, and then we're rolling with the rest of them from there. Now, we also want a left chest graphic on this. In general, I will tell you, left chest graphics are usually one of the most challenging placements. And typically, that's because most people place them underneath the armpit. Um, this shirt especially, the left chest measurement always comes off center. That's why the center line is so important. That's why when we dial in the left chest placement on the laser alignment wizard, it always comes off of the center. So I can throw the laser alignment wizard in here and dial it, or if I know I'm running a whole job of left chest graphics on this, I can take my measurement off of a center line that's already been established and then dial in another location there. So let me see what laser I want to dial in for this. I'll keep my center line. Get it into the relative location. I'm just going to loosen it up and rotate it here. Just trying to get it into the spot for now. Then I can take my specifics. So for instance, on stalls.com under help and education, we have placement specs that say a left chest graphic is seven to seven and a half to nine inches from the shoulders left seam and four to six inches from the center. Basically in line with the collar meeting the shoulder seam. So what that means is if I pinch on a standard cut shirt, if I pinch right where the collar ends and meets the shoulder, the center of that graphic should run a straight line down. And so I'm in the right general area um, for that graphic to be placed. Now I can take a more specific uh, measurement on how far down I want it and how far over from the center line. So I can grab my ruler or I can throw my laser alignment wizard on, whatever's more convenient for you. And I could say this is a center line. I want to be roughly four inches over, and it looks like I'm at like four and a quarter over. So there's some flexibility there because it says four to six inches, but what I'll do is I'll just adjust it slightly over. Probably should leave my ruler on there when I'm adjusting. Okay, I'll take the questions here in a moment. Run it over, and then basically I'm right on my four inch mark. I put the four inch spot on the ruler here, four inches over, and then I can measure the distance down. So right now when I pinch the top collar, I am at nine and a half down, and my spec says that I should be seven and a half to nine down. I think nine's down, especially a little too far down, especially given the 
uh, seam location here and printing on a small garment. So what I'll do is I'm just going to move that up slightly. At the end of the day, I just want to make sure that I'm hitting the same placement on each garment and that it's in visually appealing. Move that up. I'm shooting a crosshair. Once again, I can shoot a bounding box, but I'm printing a circular graphic, and I tend to like crosshairs for circular graphics, especially when I'm looking for the center, so I can make sure that the center line's running between the F and the S on Surf Shop, and shooting across the same location on the stars. See, it's across the bottom of both of the stars, and I'm hitting my center point. Now, placement will vary based on your size of your graphic. If this was something that was really long, I would have to come over more than four inches from the center, um, because I don't want it to run over the center of the garment. So you're going to have to use your judgment. Place one visually, use the placement specs as a guide, ultimately get it in the position. So now this is set up to literally run repeat orders without worrying. Press that down and I'll take the question. Yes, yeah, so let me show you that here in one second. Is there a bulb to be replaced if the laser stops? So I'm going to point that out to you. So I'll do that spec. Uh, application and let me show you that. So the each of these line lasers is independent so if some if one of them would burn out over time and there's some ridiculous uh, amount of hours that they'll burn um, you just unplug the laser here everyone's an individual plug you unplug the laser and then you can unscrew Right there is just a little thumb screw, and then the laser pops out. So basically, if, if one burns out, your whole system isn't down. And you can buy these replacement lasers from Hotronics, and I know you're going to ask me how much they cost, and I don't have it off the top of my head, but I want to say somewhere between $20 and $30 is, is what I remember. Um, but I will definitely email you all with the replacement cost if you're interested in that, but I think it's $20 or $30. Then you get the new one in, you just string it through here and tighten it back into place. All of the lasers that we give you are auto-focused, so you sh you're not able to adjust the focus of them. Uh, we make sure they're focused, basically. You can fully rotate them, but that was one of the major issues with lasers of old, is that they were, um, they were not auto-focused, so people would have problems adjusting them and maintaining a nice, bright laser light on the surface, which you can see we have that here. All right, what other questions? Let me give you... Okay, so when you get into other cuts of shirts and you have a tough time finding the shoulder seam, really you're going to have to just go down from the um, top, the highest point of the collar where it's going to sit on the neck, and you're going to have to go off of center of the shirt. Lay one out flat, find the center of the shirt, and make your placement from there. So uh, another tip, you know, with just general placement advice, you don't want to come seven inches down on a scoop neck shirt or on a uh, v-neck shirt or something like that because obviously it's going to wear a little bit different. The neck's going to be cut a little bit lower um, with certain ladies garments and seven inches down is going to be all the way almost tucked into the belt. So you want to be very careful um, with the placement based on the cut and the style of garment. What other questions? Okay. So let me, uh, I'll kind of leave you on that angle here for a second while I figure out what I want to show you next. Oh, I know what I didn't show. Um, optional plans. We'll go to the Fusion uh, for that. You're on 4, Joe, correct? Okay. Okay. All right, so when you start to talk about printing youth size shirts, and so we'll um, kill two birds with one stone here, um, youth size shirt and also script with tail. Um, you get a shirt that, if you're threading, just cannot be split and thread over here without warping the shirt. I can't pull it down any further here until you start to get some buckling. So what you can do with most stalls presses, if you own those, are interchange the platens with a simple little click out, swap off the 16 by 20 size. I'm going to drop in the 11 by 15 size. And obviously that changes how my lasers are configured. But I want to show you that the laser alignment wizard still works with this smaller plan. All you need to do, the same sort of concept, you need to find the edge 
So you need to find the zero point. Now you'll have to feel on the sides, and there's little holes here, how it's perforated so you can actually see your finger down through. And so I'm going to pinch this on the five and a half mark on both sides. Okay, I'm pinching on the five and a half mark, and I'm just making sure that this is centered on my smaller attachment because it's important to find center or the zero line on the 11 by 15. So once I find the center or my zero line, then I can dial in the laser accordingly. So I can flip it on. Um, in this case, as I mentioned, we're going to do a script with tail. Let's see if I have one. I think I adjusted that one earlier. So I'll grab the closest one to a script with tail, which is going to be this one. Loosen it up. I'm going to dial it into my script with tail. See how I'm adjusting it here. And once I have it in position, just lock it in. Okay. And then um, I want the closest one to my center line. Take that one. I'm going to bring it down to the center line so I can find the center of my script with tail. Make a quick fine adjustment here. Good. And then lock it in. So now I have my two placements. I have my script with tail placement. I have my center line. Now, of course, the script with tail You'll have to decide um, where the right placement is for the garment that you've loaded, um, but it'll give you a line for the 15-degree angle, so you can move that across the attachment and then ultimately get your right placement. So now, same concept. I'm going to pull this shirt down onto my 11 by 15 attachment. Going to slide the collar off of the side, and then if I grab a script with tail application, um, this is products called SimStitch, which is a great product uh, for script with tail or any connected design. So you get one component. It actually looks like it's sewn, but it's just a heat applied application. Position it onto the press. Ultimately, with any graphic, I can measure the first one and say, what is my center reference on that? So I'll go from the edge of the V over. It's 10 inches, so I'm looking for the 5-inch mark on the graphic, which is pretty much right on this corner of the N, this corner, so I'm a little bit to the right. So I'm going to bring it over there, corner of the N, make sure my script with tail is still on the 15 degree angle, and boom, I'm ready to cover and heat apply. It's that easy. Make sure you follow the recommended time, temperature, and pressure, and adjust your pressure for the particular plant that you have loaded. In this case, I just want to get the transfer temporarily on to show you, but um, it takes much longer than four seconds to apply SimStitch, but you get the concept. So uh, just a quick product reference real quick. We won't have time to press this, but there's also um, sublimated SimStitch or SimStitch with patterns. So patterns are really trendy right now. This is a plaid pattern and a custom word mark um, available through any word, any way on stalls.com. So uh, great for athletic tail sort of applications, um, place perfect every time. Give you a look at that. Okay, so hopefully this is helping. You're starting to get ideas on how you can get better placement. Now, um, I wish, you know, I really don't want to give you a whole bunch of tips on how to do things with a ruler. The, the standalone laser alignment tool is only $295. Um, which is a great price point for making sure that garments don't get rejected or get ruined. Um, at this point, since we launched this, I think there's no going back. I think if we fast forward two or three years from now, everybody is going to be using some sort of laser tool um, to line stuff up. So I would certainly recommend budgeting that with your new heat press purchase or your next investment. We've sold out of them the first day at the recent, recent show in uh, Long Beach, I think it was like 30 or 40 units in the first day. People carried them off the floor left and right. So if you're paying attention, I loaded a sleeve and leg attachment. Um, I can measure um, to do my center line on this, or I can use my wizard. Um, I prefer the measurement on this particular one, so I know the platen itself is about 6 inches. So if I measure it at its uh, fattest point, it's about 6 inches. 
and I want this to be about the, at the three inch mark, so I need to come over um, just a little bit. So I can make that adjustment um, to bring it over, or as I'm doing this, I'm thinking that the best way to do this is job specific placement, which means I'm going to press a bunch of these yoga pants, or capri pants rather. First I'm making sure the pocket is off the edge. Put that into position, and depending on the graphic that I'm doing, another CAD cut graphic here, I can place my first one off of the press, make sure it's lined up how I want, and the, you know, this is up to your discretion, placement on a pant leg. There's really no spec for that. But the point is, you want the first one to look like the 40th one. Otherwise, you're going to start to get complaints that they're not placed right. So what I'll show you how to do is basically place one. I'm going to dial it into the top side of that graphic. Okay. Then I'm going to dial my other one in. Down the edge. Need to rotate it a bit. Okay, now when I go to load every subsequent print, I'm basically going to make sure that the top side of the graphics on the top line and the rest of it is butting up against the right line right corner register everything. I can even, on this particular style of garment, I have a nice pocket up here, so I could shoot a placement line for my pocket on the top as well to make sure, but I know the pocket's going to drape off the edge on every single one. I could even shoot a center line for the edge of the pocket, and boom, I'm ready to heat print. Once again, adjust the pressure and hit glitter flake for 300 degrees, 10 seconds. Once it's done, peel the carrier. And we have a completed print, knowing that every single one is going to be in the same placement. Okay. So I am going to stop and take some questions. I think we're getting close to um, concluding what I had to present today. And are there any additional questions right now from the group? I have a name and number application I want to show you next. I forgot about that one. Yeah, so placement on pants is tough. I've seen it a hundred different ways. So you can decide to go right down the side of the pant leg. Um, and sometimes I think the best way to figure that out is just to um, fold the pants and lay them on their side, crease them at the center waist and the back waist and then take a measurement and have a center line. Um, you can even tape a center line, but that distance is going to uh, vary based on if it's a small pair of uh, pants or if it's an extra large pair of pants. So usually I like to find the center line on each particular pair, and if it's a pair of pants like I just pressed, which are the kickoff capris from Boxercraft, they have that nice little zip pocket, so I can take my distance from that zip pocket every time. And as far as distance down from the waist, once again, it, it's up to you. I've seen, um, when I'm doing uh, capri pants, I want to be cognizant of the fact that they're going to be bunched up at the bottom and make sure I actually come down from the waist and don't just come up from the ankle. But it depends on the pants, and that's completely up to you. I think the important thing is making sure that when you give the customer a visual or a sample, you record the measurements. Okay, And that way, when you actually get the order, you're able to produce every one and save your measurements with your order. I've done that before. I have people do that before where they'll give a sample. All of a sudden, they'll get 30, 40 orders, 50 orders, and they're like, how did I place that on that sample? I didn't take a photo of it. I didn't write down any measurements, but I know they like the sample. Now, how do I hit that uh, placement, um, sizing of the graphic, all of those things? So make sure you take good notes and record all that. What else? Okay, that's it for now. You guys are easy today. So let's uh, press one more garment, and then we're going to close you off with a survey when the session ends. We'll do this one over at our Fusion as well. I'm going to go back to my 16 by 20 attachment.
apologize if I'm breathing heavily into the uh, mic today. A lot of uh, platen lifting happening. Okay, so we're going to do a name and number combination. I'm threading my jersey on. We're looking at a back placement here. Anybody that presses names and numbers probably has worked with the loose pre-cut numbers provided by stalls. Um, these are, this is rather the most cost-effective way to do athletic lettering and numbering. And of course, you know, there's only up to 10 players on the team, I guess, that can get a single-digit number. Everybody else is going to have a double-digit number. So you can uh, group your orders by single-digit or double-digit and ultimately uh, line up your, dial in your lasers accordingly. So one thing I like to do um, with this particular style is um, do my placements first. I can take specific measurements to make sure I am the proper distance down from the collar. Um, every sport has a spec that they recommend with a gap distance, distance between the numbers, um, size of numbers, everything. I'm not going to go through all those specifics, but they're available um, on the stall's website or at nfhs.org, which is the governing body for high school athletics. Basically, I just want to make sure that this number is not lower or higher than this number. So I like to shoot a straight line across, um, across the top, and then also shoot a straight line across the bottom of the numbers. And then typically, you can do a line laser for the inside edge of each digit. Um, of course, if you have a number one, that's going to be a little bit different. So um, some people prefer to do the center line as well. top and bottom placement are consistent. And it helps take the guesswork out of it for you. So now I'm doing the bottom line. And you always have your ruler. If I want to make sure those are straight, you um, can't throw your ruler away quite yet. I'm just going to make sure they're straight up from the bottom of the heat press. So I'm looking at three and a half there. And it's tough to see because it's a clear roller, but I'm looking at a little short of three and a half on that side. I'll just do a little rotation here. And dial it in. And of course, you can cut a spec or like rollers here and dial it into that. Um, but the idea here is, once you get a particular placement and you dial in your center line, if you want to do that or however you want to place them, every time a jersey hits the press, you can hit your placement. Um, and let's do one for the name. And I would like to fix that center line. So if you ever run into an issue, which I'm worried about that center line, I'm going to throw my laser alignment grid back on. And it just ensures I can get that center line proper. Now I'm ready to lay it out. I mean, it's a simple tip, but back to back on your transfer, if you order the Zipweed product pre-cut from us, you already have the alignment notch, which is really perfect for lining up on the center line. Make sure you line up to the edge of the actual design or letters, not the edge of the carrier, which sometimes is, is cut inaccurate. Uh, once again, I have the center line on the bottom here. So I'm going to position my numbers equal distance from the center line. And then I'm ready to cover with a cover sheet and heat apply. Very important you use a cover sheet when you're doing um, large name number combinations with pre-cuts because those pre-cut numbers can't stick to the top of your heater. They're not protected by a carrier sheet. 
thermofilm only takes six to eight seconds to apply. And this is good, we'll show you. This is live. All right, so you want to make sure you position your number the right way. I mean, uh, I didn't pay attention too much, so I actually had the adhesive side up towards the cover sheet. No harm, no foul. Basically, it just means that this number is one I wouldn't want to use again. See the adhesive glossing up on my cover sheet. I probably want to uh, discard the cover sheet, just make sure there's no adhesive that's going to transfer over. And then, I don't have one, but I'd go grab a number three, place it the right way this time into the spot, um, so I'm not, uh, this is about as off-center as you get with a single digit number two, but anyway, it happens. And it is live classrooms on Stalls TV. Been there, done that, all right, yeah, I don't feel too bad. It's, uh, trust me, I've done that before. Usually we're able to edit uh, it out, though. <laughs> but it's good that you see it sometimes. All right, so not exactly the way I wanted to end it with the Rune application, but funny anyways. Um, what sorts of... Uh, Questions? Do you have any additional questions before we close? Okay, so the laser alignment system is $295. Um, you will have the option uh, when you're completing the survey when you close out. If you're interested in buying one, um, like right after this session, we'll give you a free shipping on it. Just make sure you fill out that survey question. You want to buy one right now, we'll have somebody call you and take care of giving you the special. If you're interested but you're just not ready yet, that's fine as well. Just say not right now and we won't bother you. And if you're just simply not interested and don't think it's a good tool for you, we give you that option as well. We just want to know. So thanks again for attending this Stalls TV Live Classroom on getting things straight. Hopefully we gave you some advice that will help you be successful in your business. We'll see you at the next Stalls TV session.